Okay, so good morning, everyone. Um, so today we're gonna do the official introduction to NetPine. So we've had a couple of days of looking at neuron quite in detail, uh, the basics of single cells, uh, then uh, reaction diffusion, and finally networks last night. And so now we're gonna see uh, how to do many of these things using NetPine and the way it abstracts many of the features in, in neuron. So much of the presentation uh, today, I already went over on Monday as the introduction to the course, but we thought it would be useful to just reinforce some of these things again and maybe go in a bit more detail in some of the aspects in NetPine. So we'll do that for the first half of the session and then we'll dig into the Net NetPine GUI and we'll do the first tutorial. Um, so we're gonna do it like sort of step by step and I'll guide you through it so that you can follow along. Uh, the GUI is online, so you can all access the, the tool. And, and yeah, and then for the rest of the day, Joe will take uh, the lead in a couple of the tutorials, also using the GUI and then also programmatically. And at the end of the day, we'll have some exercises uh, using the NetPine GUI. Okay, so let's just get started. Um, so just as a refresher, NetPine is basically a Python package, as well as a graphical interface to help build, uh, run parallel simulations, optimize, and analyze uh, biological network models uh, that use the neuron simulator as the underlying tool. So it's basically a layer above neuron to help do all these things that otherwise you would have to implement by yourself. Uh, so quickly again, the, the motivation that, um, that I mentioned the other day uh, was essentially we had a, a big project, a big model to build for motor cortex, and we had lots of sources of data. So we had data at the single cell level from our collaborator. We had data in terms of the connectivity, local circuit connectivity, connectivity from other parts of the brain, the distribution of synapses within uh, each cell type, so it turned out to be like a lot of information to actually just implement directly in Python. So, so we wanted a way to sort of organize all this experimental data that we were combining to the model in a, in a bit more systematic, standardized way. So that's how it started. And uh, so we decided to try to build this uh, standardized format uh, that represented or allowed you to specify just the biological parameters of the model. So instead of having to write all this Python code and loops and Python functions, we wanted to have this kind of declarative format that you see on the on the left, where you just specify, I want a population with 20 pyramidal cells within 100 and 400 micrometers of the cortical layers. And then the tool should be able to generate all the neuron objects required to instantiate this kind of model and allow you to do a number of things like run simulations and analyze the data. So by standardizing the format, uh, this allows you to have like a, a, a similar format for all models, which is useful to learn to, to facilitate reading the model. So if all the models that you're using are in the same format, then it's gonna facilitate you using them. Uh, also modify them, modifying them in the future, sharing them with other people, and reproducing the results of previous models. So all these kind of things are can be quite challenging with some of the existing models in Neuron, especially because many of them are implemented in Hook, which is this older language, uh, which is a bit of a nightmare. So uh, we're hoping to slowly translate many of them to NetPine and standardize some of the models. And the third motivation was also this aspect of parallelization. So we haven't really touched uh, running parallel simulations in neuron, um, but it requires a couple of specific things that you need to do. Uh, you need to use this package called parallel context that you have to initialize first. You need to assign what is called a global identifier to each of the, of the neurons so that they can be essentially located in, in each of the nodes that you're using to run the simulation. So you can run, for example, in supercomputers across hundreds of nodes, 
and each of the cells will be simulated in a different computer node. So using this global ID identifier for, for each cell, you're able to pass the spikes that correspond to each cell. Um, so the idea was to facilitate all this process of setting up the parallel simulation uh, by using NetPine so that it was basically transparent to the user. The user wouldn't have to worry about this. You would just define the biological parameters of your network and NetPine will do the, the rest. And similarly, uh, a concept similar to parallelization, which is this idea of parameter exploration or optimization, where you want to run many simulations to look at different parameters of the models, <clears throat> either to explore the behavior of the model to different inputs or different conditions, or to find a set of parameters that reproduces experimental data. And so this requires running many, many simulations, modifying slight, uh, slight parameter values in each one. And so what we did is also allow NetPine to automate this process for you. So you can tell NetPine, I want to explore this range of values, uh, run all the simulations needed for that. And then NetPine will give you back the results. So uh, just to conceptually place NetPine in relation to Neuron as we did the other day. So here is Neuron at the bottom level. It's the backend simulator that NetPine uses. And here is some example code, it's very similar to the one you've been looking at the last couple of days, where you have to run these five or six commands to create a connection. And then NetPine sits on top of Neuron, and it's this extra layer which gives you this uh, NetPine language, which we call the high-level specifications or high-level language, because you can define the models in a more abstract way using this declarative format. So for example, here we want to say we want to create a connection uh, between the sensor population and the motor population with a probability of connection of 50% and a weight of 0 0.01 using excitatory synapses. You're basically defining what you want to have, and NetPine will take care of creating the necessary connections, which depending on how you've specified the model before, could be three connections or could be two million. It's just 50% of these two populations. And on top of this, we have the NetPine GUI, uh, which essentially lets you do everything that you can do through the NetPine language uh, using a graphical interface. OK, so let's see a bit more about the, the structure of NetPine, because as you are probably already realizing, NetPine is many things. There are many blocks inside the NetPine sort of tool. Um, so it's nice to, I think, to separate them and understand the, the workflow that you have to use in NetPine. So the first step is always this uh, block here that we call the high-level specifications or using the NetPine language. And that has two blocks, two components, the network parameters and the simulation configuration. Okay, and we're going to see a lot about this. So the network, the network parameters, as it says, is all the sort of biological parameters of your network model, from the properties of the cells to the connectivity in the network, stimulation that you want to provide, um, uh, rules for how to distribute the synapses, everything that is related to your network model. And then the simulation configuration is something that you might change more often every time you run a different simulation for your model and refers to things like the duration of your simulation, the integration step, uh, things that you want to record during your simulation, like we were seeing yesterday, all the voltages, uh, uh, things that you want to, options to save to some output, the files that you generate. You can save them to different file outputs, so you would specify also in this simulation configuration. And this component here is uh, also has some interconnection with the outside, so to speak, because it allows to import existing neuron models. So there are a lot of neuron models, as we were seeing yesterday. There's over 700 models on ModelDB, and many of them contain uh, single neuron models of different parts of the brain, hippocampus, cortex, whatever. Uh, they are usually in either Hulk format, .hulk, or in Python format. And they can be uh, what we call a, a, a class in Python or a template in Hulk. So NetPan allows you to import 
any of these variations of the cell models. And what it does is it basically creates an instance, a copy of that cell. It extracts all the relevant parameters and saves them in the NetPaint format. And we're going to see more, a lot more about that and use the example. And you can also import cell models in the NIRML language, which is another standardized language uh, developed by the UCL guys. Uh, so that allows you to read in more of the existing models. OK, next step. Next step is what we call the network instantiation. And this is once you have defined, you have told NetPine what model you want to build. NetPine takes all your specifications and creates all the neuron objects required to build that model. So that includes sections, it includes the netcons, the synapses, and it also builds a structure around the whole model so that it's easy to access. It has like a hierarchical structure with the populations on one side, the cells. You can go inside a cell and look at the different sections but all in Python. So it creates a, a Python structure uh, to contain the whole model that you want to build, all the cells, all the connections, all the stimulation. And it embeds the actual neuron objects that you need to use inside that Python structure. And tomorrow, we're going to play also looking at this structure more in detail, how to access it, how to play around, and modify things if you need, and so on. OK, so next step, now you have your network instance with all the neuron objects required to simulate it, and you can actually run the simulations. So uh, NetPine also provides uh, what you would call an API, application programming interface, that has, has a set of functions or methods that you can use to work with your model. Uh, these are uh, designed to be very simple, so very high level. So for example, the most common one is called uh, Create, Simulate, Analyze which basically does everything. It creates the network, runs the simulation, and runs some analysis. So with a, sim, a single command, you can do many of the things that you actually want to do. Uh, so this parallel simulation, internally what happens is that NetPine distributes the cells across whatever nodes you have available. So you, you are, you're also able to specify how many nodes you're going to run on using MPI or on supercomputers. And we will see examples of this. And NetPine takes care of distributing the cells to each of the nodes. And when the simulation finishes, it gathers the information back from each of the nodes into the master node. So you, you can visualize it, analyze it, and use it uh, as you need. Okay, so that's why you see here. Internally, NetPine does this distribution. And it's basically interfaced with the neuron simulator, which is the backend simulator for the whole thing. And the neuron simulator, when it finishes, it will provide back all the simulation results that are also stored in this NetPine Python structure. The next stage is what we call analysis and saving. So we have a lot of built-in analysis functions and visualization functions plotting uh, common to neuroscience, lots of different versions of connectivity matrices, different ways of representing connectivity as a 2D view, showing the actual lines of the connections, showing statistics of the connections. Uh, we have common uh, plots, like raster plots, showing the spike times. You can plot any of the traces of the cell, so the voltages, the currents, concentrations, all these kind of things that you can do in neuron. You can select which cells to record from. And then you have a, a number of analyses which are a bit more uh, evolved, so to speak. So we have statistics of the spikes. We have things like information measures, like normalized transfer entropy, Granger causality, uh, synchrony measures. So there's a bunch of them. And we will also have a, one of the lessons just going over all of the analysis so you have a, a good idea of how, what you can use. And the other component in this box here is the ability to save. You can save different things. You can save these high-level specifications that we were uh, specifying before. You can save the network instance with all its connections, all its cells. And you can save the simulation results. And you can save this to different file formats, including Pico, which is the one that Python uses natively, uh, JSON files, which are very common, slightly more uh, heavy. 
uh, to Mat, so you can use in MATLAB, HDF5, which are more compact, and so on. And additionally, you can actually ex export the model. So exporting means that you can use it in other standardized formats. So here it's missing actually, uh, apart from NeuroML, we also export to Sonata, which is the other big standardized format in, in neuroscience. And you can export this network instance, essentially. So the specification of all your cells and all your connections. And that, in theory, allows you to use your model in other simulators. So for example, Brian, Nest, Moose, uh, Pine, they all are able to import in uh, this kind of formats, NeuroML and Sonata. I have a question here. If you make a model in the GUI, can you still export it as a script? Yes, you can. Thank you, Joe. Yes, you have um, an option in, in the menu, and you can save to, to script so that you can then modify it programmatically. Salvador? Yes. Uh, hi, a question about the message passing through uh, uh, to and from neuron. Uh, is it need to be locally, or can I, for example, have a NetPine GUI in my computer and connect remotely to a server that has Neuron and run it through, I don't know, TCP or something like that. Is it no, possible to do that? There's no really message passing between NetPine and Neuron. So NetPine and Neuron are, are one, and they need to be installed in the system. So okay. the, message, the message passing happens between nodes of the supercomputer or whatever to send spike times. But it, all this happens sort of at the neuron backend that is implemented in neuron. They have a very evolved MPA message, MPI message passing for the spike times, which is very efficient. Mm -hmm. And uh, NetPine just uses that. So you always need to have neuron and NetPine installed together. OK. OK. And the final component here is what we call the batch simulation module. Um, so this sits on top of everything because essentially the, all the boxes below correspond to a single model and a single simulation. And for the batch, what we're doing is really running many simulations. So you essentially set up the batch on top of one of these models and then specify, for example, a range of parameters you want to explore. And as I mentioned, NetPan will take care of running multiple simulations. Uh, in whatever setup you've, you've specified, either locally in your machine, on supercomputers, and then return the results to you. It's another version of the same figure with a bit more nice graphics. And OK, so I just want, I, I included this figure, uh, this slide, just to illustrate that NetPine is really just a Python package. So if you look at the GitHub, uh, you will see it's a folder with a bunch of what we call sub, sub packages uh, of the of the father package, and so each of these sub packages is basically focused on one of the aspects that I mentioned. So, for example, analysis is for the analysis and plotting functions. Batch is for this top batch model that I mentioned. Uh, conversion is to import cells. The network, everything related to the network. Um, specs is the specifications, this aspect that I mentioned, the high level specification at the beginning, and so on. Just so you have an idea of you know, how it's actually structured internally. And yeah, so this, for example, this high level specifications, the NetPine language is inside the sub package specs. And there you define the two different objects or classes, the specs netparams and the simconfig. So we will see much more about this. OK, so I've mentioned a couple of times that the NetPine language is declarative. So I just Googled last night uh, examples of declarative versus procedural. And I got an, a couple of nice, the first two examples that came, I, I thought were quite illustrative. So it says declarative programming is saying what you want. And procedural is saying how to achieve it. So for example, in declarative, you, you would say, I want a tower of three blocks. Whereas in procedural, you would say first put down the block A, then put block B on top of block A, then block C on top of block B. Okay, so this would be more of the sort of neuron way that's procedural, and NetPine would be more of declarative, more high level. 
Another example, it said declarative tell the taxi driver to go to the JFK airport in New York. And procedural would be go straight for two blocks, make a right, proceed three blocks, make a left, and so on. Just to illustrate the, the difference between the two. And so what we have is a standardized declarative language where you can define all these things, all the things that are relevant to a, a network model, the populations, the properties of the cells in each population, the synaptic mechanisms, uh, stimulation like the current clamps, uh, spike inputs, spike generators, uh, connectivity rules, and the simulation configuration, which I already mentioned. Uh, importantly, we also cover this reaction diffusion module. I think it's one of the only sort of Python packages for neuron that actually includes support for this RxD. And as I mentioned the other day, it's, that's interesting because you can model all these molecular process diffusion of ions, calcium, potassium, IP3, the internal organelles like the endoplasmic reticulum, and model several processes which are relevant to the uh, physiology and uh, response of the cell, phosphorylation, buffering, second messenger cascades, and see how those, af those affect the actual network dynamics. So, you know, for example, uh, these uh, second messenger cascades can eventually modify plasticity in the network or firing dynamics. And so NetPine, by combining both, allows you to relate these different levels. So you can modify, for example, the IP3 concentration and look at how that affects the network activity and even the LFP signal, which is one of the tutorials we're going to do today. Okay. The other big thing that was a focus for, for us in, in this high-level language was connectivity, because that's one of the reasons we actually started developing it. And so here in this figure, we have you have an example of why we wanted to uh, focus on this. We had data that showed that within a single layer, in layer 5B of motor cortex, the connectivity from uh, layer 2, 3 cells to corticospinal cells was much stronger at the top of the layer than at the bottom. So at the bottom, there's basically very, very weak connectivity. And at the top of the layer, it's very strong. So usually models before had mostly been done by layers. So connectivity within a layer was always homogeneous, the same. And so we wanted to have the ability to provide connectivity that depended on the cortical depth of the neuron. So these postsynaptic neurons have different depths. And depending on their depth, you wanted to have stronger or weaker connections. And so we developed NetPine with the ability to do these kind of things. Uh, so we have what we call very flexible connectivity rules, which are based on the pre and the post synaptic cell properties. For example, the, the cell type or the location. It, it can also be the horizontal location in some cases. Uh, we have different connectivity functions like probabilistic, convergence, divergence. You can also set a, like a custom set of weights. And these are essentially the most common that you see uh, in experimental papers. So when you get values from experiments, you usually see um, uh, the connectivity specified in one of these. So that is convenient to be able to use it and map it directly into the model. Uh, you can also have some of the parameters of the connectivity, such as the probability of connection, or the strength, the weight, or the delay, as a function of some of these properties of the cells. So for example, you might want to have a delay that depends on the distance between two cells. So if they're further apart, you want the delay to be larger. Or a probability that also depends on the distance, which is very common in cortex. You have these distance-dependent probabilities that fall off exponentially. The cells that are closer together usually are, have a higher probability of connecting. So all these kind of things you can now specify in NetPine in a very short format you see what we call string-based functions that we will also see examples of. And we also included a couple of learning mechanisms that are sort of built into NetPine, including STDP, spike time independent plasticity, and reinforcement learning. And you also have the ability to include gap junctions, which for some models, uh, they include them and they believe they are quite important. 
Okay, so this is just a quick example to give you an idea of, you know, more uh, specific of what I'm talking about. So these are the different components you, you can specify for NetPine in this high level language. So you have population parameters. Here you have cell parameters, uh, the reaction diffusion here in the middle, some synapses and some connectivity. So you don't need to look at the details. You are going to go over many examples of this. But I just wanted to show you the general structure is you know, very homogeneous. You are basically using Python lists and dictionaries only. So it's very intuitive structures. And you just use labels for the different components and then add uh, pairs of uh, keys and values. So the cell type, pyramidal the range of locations from 100 to 400 microns, things like this, okay? Okay, so moving on to this, what we call the second step. Once you have defined your model, you tell NetPine, please build me a, a model in neuron from what I told you, and this is what you get. So what, this is what we call this uh, network instantiation. Uh, you can access it via this scene.net. We will see that later. And this is the structure of what you will see inside. So you have a top level object here, the, the network, the net. Inside you have the list of populations and the list of cells. If you go inside a cell, you can see properties of that cell, like the global ID, uh, something that we call tags, which are like more properties, the cell type of the cell, the population it belongs to, the X, Y, Z location, all these sort of metadata of the cell. And you then have this uh, dictionary called sex sections, where if you go inside, you will see a list of all the sections, soma dendrite, uh, ethical dendrites, axon, and so on. So if you remember how you implemented this in Neuron, um, in Neuron, there is no, no like top level um, object that includes all of these things, unless you set it up specifically. Uh, so you might have just the section sort of lying around. Uh, but here they're already embedded in this hierarchical structure that you can access. Um, so if you go in one, inside one of the sections, you will have all the properties of that section, the geometry, things like the diameter, the length, the topology, how it's connected, and the list of mechanisms, for example. Inside this section, you might have a hodgkin huxley mechanism or a passive mechanism and so on. And importantly, you also have these things called H object, H object, which is essentially the component where the neuron object is actually stored. So all this is a Python large hierarchical Python structure with dic dictionaries and lists, and some of these elements correspond to the neuron objects. So if you wanted to access directly the section of this soma, you could go to this uh, component of the dictionary. And then you have direct access to the actual neuron objects if you wanted to do something directly with it. So that's why uh, Robert was saying that it's nice that you can interact NetPine models. You can then interact with them and modify things directly using neuron. So you can play with both uh, at the same time. So another one? Yes. <clears throat> so uh, can you go back at uh, that one? So can we think as the soma dendrites connections and stimuli as each one of them to be an object or, or how can we think of this in globally because for me at, at least this is like okay the red ones are indeed objects in which are then i don't know constructed or connected through the the orange and green ones so can you explain a little bit more about that please yes i'm not sure uh so, I mean, we will see all this in detail in one of the sessions, but okay. the connections here, uh, what you have is a list. So inside each of the cells, the cell is an object of the type mm -hmm. network cell. Okay. And inside one of the attributes it has is the cons, which mm -hmm. is a list of connections. And those are all the connections that target that cell. Okay. 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 And so for each of the connections, then you can see the properties and the actual net con object of that connection. Okay. Thank you. OK, so next step that I mentioned is this uh, parallel simulation. Um, so you can just 
run one of the commands and netbind will take care of distributing the cells so you see here sending the different cell objects to the different nodes that you're going to simulate in your supercomputer and once the simulation finishes then it gets back the uh, simulation data for example the spike times or the voltages into the master nodes so that you can process it uh, this is the parameter exploration that we uh, discussed so we will see more about this on friday and it's the ability to set up these uh, explorations and optimizations in a very easy way. Here you see what we call a grid search, where you have four different parameters, and you're visualizing the firing rate of one of the populations as a function of these four parameters. So this is useful to find uh, useful combinations of parameters. This is uh, evolutionary algorithms or genetic algorithms, which are also built into NetBind. So we started with a network that didn't really fire uh, in a nice way, we didn't really match what we saw in biology. So we set one of these fitness functions with what we wanted to see. And automatically, uh, it ran many generations of many candidates of uh, solutions for the network model. And it arrived at a solution, a final candidate, that matched more nicely the experimental data. Simulation analysis a bunch of useful plots that are very easy to access with one line commands. Uh, local field potentials, which I mentioned, so you can place these simulated electrodes in any place of the 3D tissue that you're simulating and get a relatively realistic LFP signal. From there, you can compute the current source density, another very common measure in experimental papers. And the GUI, which we're going to see today in a lot of detail. And I included a couple new slides just to mention some of the directions in which NetPine is moving. And this is uh, quite exciting. So we are integrating with the Human Brain Project eBrains platform, which is basically the extension of what they called before the uh, Brain Simulation platform. And that is where they're the Human Brain Project, for those who don't know, is this very massive project in Europe, $1 billion. And they're combining all their experimental data, all their simulations into this platform. And so NetPine will be one of the tools that you will be able to use through the platform to run simulations. And we're also looking at actually integrating the GUI more, more closely. Similarly, with this other portal called the Open Source Brain, this is already active as well. You can actually use it from Open Source Brain. Here we are doing a pretty close integration. Uh, so this is really nice because the open source brain has some infrastructure that allows you to uh, manage files and connect to GitHub, for example. So uh, with this integration, what will happen is that the users will be able to log into their own space with their own, their own file system, copy files from GitHub or save to GitHub, and uh, run simulations using NetBank, so build models, run simulations. You could store your results in your own workspace. And so it gives sort of a, a permanent space to work online uh, using NetBank. You can use the GUI, but you will also be able to use uh, sort of Jupyter Notebook, which is built into the GUI. And this is going to be available very, very soon, in the next couple months, probably. Uh, so this is another screenshot of that. So you see here on the left, for example, all these, uh, the workspace with all the different files. And the nice thing about Open Source Brain is that it also integrates a bunch of other tools. So for example, one of them is the NWGB Explorer. NWGB is this format which is uh, becoming the standard for uh, electrophysiological data. And so what you will be able to do is export the data from your NetBank simulation into NWB and then use this tool to visualize it in many nice ways, as well as compare it directly to experimental data. So you can load your experimental data in this tool as well and then match it to your simulation data. I mentioned this the other day as well, but we are compatible with Sonata and UML. So that is, you can see here all the different tools that can read and write this Sonata format, for example. Uh, so BMTK, this is a similar tool by the Allen Brain. Uh, INN, also similar. And so once you build your model, you can export to this Sonata format and make it uh, widely available for many different people who use different tools. 
And similarly, you can use models from other people, import them from the Sonata format, and use them in NetPy. This here in the middle, for example, is using the same Sonata file. Uh, we run the simulation using BMPK, which is the Allen Brain tool, and NetPy. And you get essentially the same results. And here at the top, visualizing the network in the BlueBrain project tool and in NetPy. Uh, so I put here a bunch of resources. So we have the documentation, uh, which explains all these different components that I'm talking about in quite detail. We have, let me maybe just quickly show you. Uh, I think these are useful. The package index, this is a, a way where you can search for specific functions of, oh, I lost my window. Uh, so you see here all the different blocks, so different components of NetPine analysis, batch cell. And if you click in analysis, for example, you will see the different uh, subcomponents of analysis. If you want to see plotting functions related to spikes, you click here, and you will see a bunch of the functions available. Say you want to learn more about how to plot a spike histogram, you can click here and get all the list of arguments and a description of each one, what you can do, and so on. Joe is actually working on revamping all this and making an even much, even nicer version. And that will also be available very soon. And I think it will be very cool. OK, so that's the package index. Then we have tutorials, which we are going to go over um, essentially today and tomorrow. There is an interactive tutorial using Jupyter Notebook, which uh, Joe will go over today at the end. Uh, we have the, chat, the YouTube channel with a bunch of videos, plus all the ones from this course. And we also have this thing that we call example models. I'm just going to quickly show this. Oh, no. So this is an Excel sheet. So we want to improve this a bit because it's a bit prehistoric, but essentially it contains the list of all models that we know of have been or are being developed in NetPine. Uh, it has the name of the model or a brief description, the people who are developing it with the emails, and if there are any links to repos or relevant models, then that's also included here. Uh, so I encourage you, if you start developing models next week, that you add this, uh, the information to this list at the end. You can just come here, put the name of your model, uh, your email, and any links if possible. And that would be great because it's really helpful for us for funding purposes and for other people to use the models in the future. OK. Um, the paper, which is published in eLife, uh, the list of models, which I just mentioned, I think we have like 90 something models now, and uh, over 40 labs have been using or used NetPine at some point. Uh, quickly, a couple of the example models. This one I showed on Monday is this little model of motor cortex circuits, 10,000 neurons, and 30 million synapses, very detailed connectivity. We have a similar one now of auditory cortex, uh, which we have a talk next week explaining more about this. It includes thalamus and auditory cortex in a lot of detail with many different 42 different populations in different layers. And yeah, here's a raster plot. It's already reproducing some of the experimental data that we have uh, from, from macaques. Uh, we just recently, Fernando Borges, who's one of the tutors, converted the, so this model is also developed by Erica, who will give the talk next week. Uh, Fernando Borges converted the uh, somatosensory cortex blue brain project into NetPine recently. And this is a massive project, uh, a massive model with, uh, I think it's 30,000 synapses, 30,000 neurons, and I don't know how many synapses, many, many different cell types. And so you see here uh, this implementation in NetPine. You can just see here the list of different populations. It's very long. And some activity here. These are preliminary results, but we're already reproducing much of what they did. So this allows you to use this kind of models, which haven't been really public until now. 
uh, so you can use the netpan version now. And this is an example that we converted from Nest, one of the most popular Nest models, which is the Poitins and Lisman thalamocortical network with 80,000 neurons and 150 million synapses. Uh, however, these were point neurons, so they're you know, very fast to simulate. And it also shows that you can use NetPine to simulate this, uh, this type of models. And there's also a talk next Thursday describing this model more in detail from Cecilia. And we, we did a nice feature, which is implement a version of this model using multi-compartment neurons. So until then, it had always been implemented using point neurons. So now you have a, a version with five compartment neurons that allows you to do new things, like look at LFP and CSD, for example. Another project that we're working with for a couple of years now, it's the Human Neocortical Neurosolver at Brown University. And they have been using NetPine um, for their tool. So their tool tries to provide the biophysical explanations of EEG signals. And so if you have EEG signals in patients uh, which are not healthy, then you can try to relate some of the biophysical and the circuit parameters to the different disorders uh, that are reflected in the EEG signal. So we have an implementation of this model in NetPine. And you can see the, the GUI, the old version of the GUI showing this network model. So the idea is that they wanted to, to use NetPine so that it became easier to, to scale the model up, make modifications, model other parts of the brain, and so on. And finally, I just wanted to include here uh, this new collaboration that we have, trying to model uh, the bold signals, so fMRI signals. So this is the first time from a NetPine model we got a bold-like signal. So you would eventually, using this uh, neurovascular coupling model with a lot of detail of the astrocytes and the blood flow and so on, you provide some inputs from NetPine in terms of the synapses and the activity. And then it calculates this bold signal, which in theory reproduce very nicely the data. So this, the red is the data points from uh, an actual bold signal and the blue is the NetPine simulation. Oh yeah, and this, I included this fun example that we did several years ago. Uh, it's implemented in NetPine as well, and it's a, a spiking network that drives a, a robot. So we connected it to a, a thing called the VREP, which is a robot simulator. And we basically have like three or four populations that are connected to the different motors of the wheels, and then a bumper, and so the, you can see the, the little robot going around the room, bumping against things, and rotating and moving around. So it's also an example of how you can connect NetPine models and neural models to external things, like this robot simulator, what we've also done with, for example, a virtual arm simulation and a robotic arm. OK, so yes, yeah, a quick thanks to everyone involved in all these projects. and from several institutions, from MetaSelf, who's the company who develops the GUI, and all the different funding agencies and grants that have helped in this tool and models. OK, and any questions before we move on to the tutorial? I have a question. Uh, if I design a model of a network with very details and uh, with each network, each neuron with its own physical model in neuron, can I read this uh, model of the network in that panel yeah, and then run and do something? Um, so if you build it in neuron, you would need to convert it to net panel. So in theory, this shouldn't be too complicated because, for example, you can import the cells, the cell models. That's a single line, and you can just use them directly in your model. Uh, but then whatever connectivity you have in the network that you implemented using Python code, you will have to translate to these connectivity rules, which in theory shouldn't be too hard, but it depends on the specific network and how complex it is. 
Mm, but if I have not uh, connectivity rules, I had like uh, a, a specific connectivity from a connectome, something like that. You can also use that in be... you can use that in NetBank. So you have one of the connectivity types is the custom connectivity, where you can provide like a yeah. mapping, like a matrix of the of the full connectivity between cells. So there you can ah, okay, okay. you can basically use any function or whatever to generate this custom matrix and then pass it on to NetBank. Oh, thanks. Any other questions? OK, so let's move on to the NetBank GUI. Oh, okay. So the first thing we're going to do is try to open the GUI. So for that, you have to go to netpine.org slash GUI on your browser. I don't know if you can try maybe to open the browser at the same time as you have the, the meet so that you can follow along. This might be hard depending on your screen size, but maybe some easy way so you can switch between both of them. I'm getting a warning that zero of three nodes are available. OK, so that's normal. So that means that we are all trying to connect. And the way this works is that this is hosted on Google Cloud. And it's an auto-scaling cluster. So by default, we only have three nodes, uh, which allows like maybe five or six people. And when more people try to connect, it will uh, deploy more nodes so that more GUIs are available. So it's going to take maybe a few minutes when we all start clicking, and then it should actually I can force it to deploy more. Yeah, just up to six nodes, I see. Ah. So yeah, it's doubled already. Seven nodes. You can actually monitor here. Yeah. So the first, the CPU. first time you, yeah, the first time you try it might not work. So you just try again. So this is using Kubernetes, which is very popular. Uh, OK, so we have our cluster here. Um, nodes, so we should see this growing. So number of nodes right now is 9. It's set to auto scale up to 100. So we should be OK. So I'm going to try myself. Service unavailable. Okay. I'm also getting the same error. Service not available. Yeah. So we're, that's good. That's normal. We are just waiting for the notes to get deployed. Yeah, next time we'll have everybody log on at the beginning of the talk so it has time to spool up. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, actually, I could have just forced to have more of these notes on. I forgot I've done it for other courses. Let me see if I can do that. So each of us has one CPU, right? Actually, in a single node, in a single CPU, you host two, I don't know how they call them, two, two somethings that represent each one is a user <laughs> so you can fit more than one user on okay, on okay. One apart. i don't yeah okay. i guess we'll just leave it let's keep trying okay, so how many people actually have a gui and you say me? Me. Me, OK. I do. OK, great. I'm going to 
try to just force this to have 15 nodes. It's not, uh, uh, it doesn't let me edit while, it, while it's sort of adding nodes, so that's why. Oh well, so let me see if I can manage to get one. Otherwise, I can use the slides. Maybe I can use the ones from Metacell in the meantime, so the developers, I think, have their own deployment. Uh, yeah, that comes up right away for me if somebody, if people want to use that. But I think they only have a couple, so we shouldn't really share them. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, should I? I mean, I don't have a key yet. Should I uh, press S5? Uh, yes. I think the idea is that you keep trying, and they, it will keep oh, okay. spawning new new nodes. Yay, and available. Let me see if it's increasing. <laughs> okay. Okay, so well, anyway, I have one. So maybe for now, while we are figuring this out, I'll just show here some of the basics. Do you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. OK, so here is the NetFine GUI. Uh, let me go over the different components. So here on the side, the sidebar, you can actually expand it here at the bottom. I'm zooming a bit. Okay. So you, we are essentially on the, on the creating network uh, component. So there's two things. One is the creating component and we can then switch to the running and visualizing component, which we will do later. So in here, what we are doing is defining the different elements of the network, uh, what we call the high-level specifications. And you already can see here on the left side panel uh, these different components that I mentioned before, the cell types, the populations of neurons, synaptic mechanisms, the connectivity rules, Stimulation sources and stimulation targets, and we will see what this means and where they're separated into two. Uh, the simulation configuration and some settings for the plots. You also have here at the bottom something that says Python, and if you click on that, you essentially get a Jupyter notebook here at the bottom. You can do anything you want, print two plus two, as we're doing before. And this will give you access also to the NetPine structures that are generated. So this uh, Jupyter Notebook is actually in sync with the graphical interface. So anything you do in the graphical interface, you can then see here. And if you make changes to the structures directly in the Jupyter Notebook, they will be reflected on the GUI as well. So we will see an example of this later. And um, OK, so I can close this. So. If I navigate through these different windows, these different tabs, you will see that you have the ability to create the different components. I can click on this plus here and create a cell. I can create a population, create synapses. Okay, and we will see how to do each of these things. And then at the top, you have a menu. So one of the things you can do if you click on NetPine is go to color preferences. And you can change the default background. So by default, we have this dark one, but we actually like more the black one. <laughs> so if you are, if you want, you can change it to black because you see the neurons more clearly. Uh, in the file menus, where you will be able to import uh, existing models, for example, you can also upload from your file system. So you have your own models. You can push files, and you can even upload zip files that contain a bunch of you know cell models mod files whatever and they will all be available in the gui so you can potentially uh, visualize any model that's implemented in netpine in the gui uh, here in view uh, you see the two different 
uh, spaces that I mentioned, the edit, which is the one we are on, creating the model, and the explore, which is where you visualize your network and plot some simulation results. A uh, model lets you do things like create the network, this instantiation that I was talking about, or simulate the network. And tutorials has a bunch of the tutorials that we're going to do uh, built in. So you can just click on any of these, and you will get the, the model with all the specifications already filled in. So this is useful. If you get stuck, you get some errors, you don't know how to continue, you can just click on one of the tutorials, and you will see uh, all the information there. On file, I forgot uh, an important one, which is new. So if you click in new, you will get a blank new model. And sometimes when things don't work, this is a useful place to go to. So let me just check how we're doing. OK, so. We have around 11 nodes, which should be for around 20 people, I think. So let me know if you don't have a working GUI yet. I don't. I don't. I don't. Okay. I don't. Yeah, I'm I don't. still loading, too. <clears throat> okay. It says right now we're on a web interface, but it's. OK. Hmm. Uh, so is that all? Can, yes. can I download this? I mean, to have my no. the key in my computer? Unfortunately, the GUI right now, the latest version is not installable locally. OK. Um, uh, but it should be available at some point. Uh, but yeah, it, we will fix it so it works online, no worries. So I'm actually, sure. maybe we can do uh, a break here so that we can actually figure out this and spawn all the required nodes. And we we can continue afterwards and do the tutorials straight away. So uh, yeah, I'll let you know in general when we continue, and we can start with the tutorial one then, and I'll, we'll make okay. sure that we have enough enough notes for everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.